Hello, I'm Savage Jim, and uh, this is a Zenoa G260 uh, two-stroke engine for remote control cars. This engine is a gasoline engine, uh, so it is not run on nitro fuel like your much smaller uh, nitro trucks that you see in the, your your A scale and 10 scale cars that you see running around on the streets. Uh, actually, uh, most of them are actually starting to go to battery now because uh, well, batteries are a lot more powerful, uh, motors are a lot more powerful, and uh, battery technology, especially with uh, lithium polymer, are able to uh, run a lot longer run times than they, they used to before with the nickel metal hydride. Uh, this, this gasoline engine, as uh, compared to a nitro engine, is uh, 260, uh, I'm sorry, 26 cc. Uh, the true displacement, if you calculate the stroke and, uh, and diameter of the bore, it comes up to about 25.4 cc, but it's advertised as 26 cc, thus the 2.6 out of the 260 in the model number. Uh, this engine, as compared to a nitro engine, gets a lot longer runtime because it is gasoline. Gasoline, uh, you know, you, you could literally just meter just very little amounts of fuel and uh, the engine will run for a very long time. I think this engine will give me about 45 minutes, maybe even 50 minutes of runtime on a, uh, I forget how big the, uh, the tank is on uh, the monster truck that I pulled this engine off of. Uh, this engine actually came out of an FG monster truck, a, four, uh, a 2x4 monster truck, and actually, no, I'm sorry, it came out of a 4x4 monster truck, the uh, FG 4x4 comp, uh, all, all, uh, all billet aluminum parts and stuff. But I took this engine out and put in a, a G26, a G270, which is a, an upgraded version of the G260, and uh, and also uh, the G270 that I put on that uh, 4x4 is uh, is also seen some porting work and modifications done by an after aftermarket set of guys known as CSP. I've done some uh, modifications to this engine. As you can see, I got this wire right here. Uh, this is actually a remote kill switch. This plugs into a kill switch, which is also connected to your. Uh, uh, to your receiver so you could actually use your remote control with the push of a button to turn the engine off. Otherwise, uh, when you're ready to turn it off, if you do not have the remote kill switch, what you have to do is you actually have to walk up to the RC, go up to the engine itself, and you have to push this yellow button to turn the engine off. And that just simply causes a short in the magneto and it, it quits sending the spark up to the, in, you know, to the spark plug. Uh, this engine is dirty. I'm in the midst of cleaning it. Uh, I gave it a, you know, kind of a once over cleaning, but it does need a lot more to it. Uh, I need to replace the fuel, uh, the air filter. I have this, uh, uh, this outwear on it to help protect it, but when I pulled this off, I saw that the filter was completely, thoroughly, all the way through dirty and uh, no longer serviceable for this engine. Also, no longer serviceable is this, uh, you can see right here, uh, there's, a, there's this gap right here. This, this, uh, uh, I forget what they call this ho uh, hosing right here. It's coming. Uh, it's coming apart anyway. And uh, the last time uh, you know I had a, a pipe on it, I took the pipe off so I could get at this. Last time I had a pipe on it, uh, the pipe simply pulled off on this and caused these tears right here. And therefore, the pipe was unable to give its function of uh, back pressure at the appropriate timing for these two-stroke engines. These two-stroke engines do not have valves. Uh, they are uh, totally timed. Uh, the timing event is uh, set by the uh, the location of the port. Uh, I don't know if you can see it down through this. Uh, no, you cannot. Never mind. You could probably, see, uh, if there were more light, you could see down deep into the into the port here. You could see the uh, exhaust port cut into the into the uh, cylinder sleeve. Anyways, the height of how high these uh, cylinder sleeves the ports are cut determines you know, the event timing of when the exhaust ports open and the intake valves open. And there is a considerable amount of time in which both the intake and the exhaust ports are open so that you do have a lot of uh, over scavenging. And uh, that's one of the functions of the, uh, the tuned pipe or the, you know, the, uh, well, this one, the stock pipe is actually a can pipe. These pipes actually provide a back pressure at the right instant that the, uh, that the uh, exhaust port opens so that it helps prevent over scavenging. You're still going to get some over scavenging, but these tune pipes they uh, minimize the amount of over scavenging, and thus you're able to uh, you know recycle and reuse the fresh fuel air charge that would have been otherwise wasted out the exhaust pipe. 
Uh, another mod that I put onto this engine, this is not the stock clutch. This came off of an Elcon Cleon. This is a rather high dollar clutch. I forget how much this costs, but it is very nice. It does a uh, excellent job gripping the, uh, gripping the uh, clutch bell. As a matter of fact, uh, the clutch bell, it did such a good job on the clutch bell that was on this. Uh, the clutch bell was turning blue from overheating. The metallurgy on it was actually being uh, molecularly, molecularly compromised. Its structural integrity was being molecularly uh, compromised, and I had to take it off and get a much stronger uh, hardened steel clutch bell. Anyway, uh, I'd probably need to take uh, these shoes over here. You can see some discoloration from where it's been gripping that, uh, that clutch bell, so I probably need to re replace these shoes as well. They're, pr they're kind of worn down. They're supposed to be, uh, actually, uh, you could see they're... Uh, you can see that uh, the shoe is actually short or shorter than that piece of uh, aluminum, uh, that this cut piece of aluminum right here. It's supposed to be, uh, there's supposed to be more shoe material that comes up over here where my finger is, but you can't see it because it's, uh, you know, it's been worn down some. But anyway, uh, Another Genoa, uh, Zenoa engine uh, that, are, that are available in this displacement is the G270 uh, that I was talking about earlier that I put onto my uh, 4x4 truck, you know, which replaced this particular engine. You can also get these engines in a shorter, I believe it's a shorter stroke, uh, the G240s and the G230s, you know, that's, they're both 23cc's. The G270 is also a 26cc uh, or 25.4cc in true, uh, you know, in true measurement of the displacement. But, uh, you know, the, the upgrade from the G260 to the G270, one of the key things is you have uh, stronger head bolts uh, right here. I, I don't know if you can see that, but there's not enough light. This is, a, this is a head that's held down by only two bolts. So, from right here, uh, if, if you could see underneath there, there is a bolt right there, and there is a head bolt right here. Uh, the G270 has uh, four bolts actually, so you will see uh, you will see a bolt right here where my finger is. In addition to this one and this one, and also a fourth position right here, right behind the air shroud. Uh, going over the air shroud over here, you could I, I think if you look through the vents, you could see that there's a flywheel right there, and uh, the vent you, you can see these fins turning on the flywheel. These fins do an excellent job in drawing air from this side of the engine and forcing it you know forcing air out back here across the crankcase and also pushing air up here into this shroud this is a plastic shroud here I need to replace that because that's been melted that seen its fair use of uh, you know of, uh, of running and you also need to get another screw here because I've lost this this screw right here it simply came off because uh, I didn't use a uh, uh, tread lock to keep it in place but anyway the uh, these fins do an excellent job pushing air up into this shroud and you know up into this front case into the shroud and out this open part right here of the shrouding uh, the carburetor I believe is a Walbro WT813 uh, the G270 engine has a uh, I'm not sure I believe it is a, also a, a WT813 but I think it's a it's a better modification of that carburetor I think it's a W WT813A and uh, these are simply pull start just like that I do need to uh, I haven't uh, you know upgraded the little locking pin on this to uh, to catch the, the flywheel to give it a start so it's still loose at the moment that's part of my maintenance of this engine I haven't run it in a couple of years so I'm taking it apart giving it a good cleaning and uh, getting it reserviced again to hopefully one day you know get it running again and uh, put into another RC but anyway this thing is uh, you know it's, it's simply pull start just like a chainsaw uh, there are some aftermarket kits where you could use a remote start where you have a, an electric motor that starts your, your motor for you, your engine for you. However, those things are not cheap. Or there's also even a, a, uh, a modification where you take this off, this, uh, this uh, starting shroud off, and you have a, uh, a spool with a, uh, with a uh, I guess it's kind of a, I guess it's kind of a hex knob, and you could, you could stick a drill with a with like an allen end on it to start your engine with a power drill with a power drill excuse me but other than that um, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up uh, this sums up my review of the Zenoa G260 RC1 engine